then our ongoing work is with uh, development of new interface specifications. We're updating persistence parameters, um, economic currency type interfaces, um, and also a new reporting interface. I um, we've presented the the background information on those interfaces at previous uh, AGMs. So I don't plan to present them today. I do have the slides here that we presented in the past. If anybody has any questions about a specific interface, um, we can talk about it um, in the question and answer time. OK. Um, the licensing um, was developed with the, the management board were the ones that actually made the licensing decisions and what licenses and what copyright notices that will be uh, placed on Cape Open uh, land products, CO land products. Um, so I'll leave it to them to to actually present the, the license itself. Um, we've helped to find what the CO land intellectual property were, and it basically falls into three categories, which are the abstract specifications, which are the interface specification documents, things like uh, you know, you're, you're all familiar with those documents, the, the, the PDFs that are distributed, um, that type of a thing. The implementation specifications are the source code and uh, um, type libraries, primary interop um, assemblies that are used in the actual development of uh, Cape Open components. And the final thing that we've, uh, the final area of uh, Intellectual property is the distributed software, things like the Cobia middleware package that we'll talk about. Colt, which is distributed, um, developed by the uh, Interop SIG, is also one, another um, package that's uh, uh, distributed software. Um, we've provided input uh, on the impact of the licensing. You know, our concern going in was that uh, we avoid GPL type of a license, that it, it is a fairly free or um, um, what a permissive type of a license, um, something like the the uh, uh, MIT license or uh, one of the BSD licenses. Um, so th those were our concerns with the, with the licensing issues, um, and you know the, the the management board did choose one of those more permissive licenses. Um, they they you know I don't know if that's part of Richard's talk or not, but anyhow that was our input on it. And the reason why I mentioned some of these things and particularly what CO Land's uh, intellectual property is, is because the intellectual property is what's versioned. And I want to segue over to the versioning proposal. Um, you know, this lets us track the changes within um, the specification documents and um, uh, into uh, um, what's actually being used out there in the in the community. OK. Um, we've identified there are basically three different types of changes that can occur. A breaking change, um, which fundamentally alters the interactions. Um, feature additions, uh, adding a feature which doesn't affect, which just adds to the capability, doesn't change anything that's already there. And of course, bug fixes, errata, and clarifications, and those types of things that uh, um, they they fix issues within the performance of functionality or usability, um, so they're they're lower level even uh, within the within the hierarchy of changes. Um, our versioning numbering scheme that we're using, um, we're going to use the major, minor, patch, and then the revision or build number based upon what the type of product is. Okay, um, you know both. The way that we've uh, decided to do this was that both major and minor version numbers are changed for the breaking changes. Um, and it basically comes down to whether it's considered a major breaking change or minor breaking change um, as to which number is changed. This kind of goes along a little bit with the way that the type libraries work. They're uh, um, what the major and minor version number is kind of tied together there. Um, a minor revision, um, again, minor change. The patch version number will be used uh, when um, a feature is added. 
that's what will you know the difference between Cape Open and 1.1.0 and 1.1.1 will be that something has been added in this case it'll probably be flow sheet monitoring and uh, I think it's custom data are the two that are being added now um, and then uh, went to the type library and then when reactions come available they'll be added and the, the number there will be um, incremented as well okay and then the build reversion number is added if uh, something is needed to be updated or a bug fix. Um, you know that would be like we need to issue a new uh, new uh, um, installer package or make some minor change um, within the the the, the uh, um, type library or PIA that doesn't that doesn't affect the interface specifications themselves. Um, and the last bullet point on this slide about the interoperability SIG, um, we we decided that or uh, that the interoperability SIG would have the final decision on which increment, which numbers are incremented and how numbers are incremented. Um, I, I think a couple of things led to that, which is one, they really don't have any interfaces that they um, issue themselves, so they're kind of Apologies. a third party. Uh, sorry, I can't see the screen. Is that the problem only for me or for everyone? OK, you are. I can you? see it. I can see it. OK, sorry. I, I also uh, can see it. Ignore yeah. me, then. <laughs> sorry. And, uh, and, and Anusha, you are not able to see it? No, Should it says can't it? display content. There was a problem displaying the content. Uh, I'm sorry, you, please, Corey, and it's fine. Uh, no, do you want to, Michelle, okay. you can send her the uh, the slide deck if you'd like. OK, uh, yeah, but, uh, OK. So you. Since you have a copy of it too. Um, yeah, and like I said, the interoperability SIG will have the uh, the final say in incrementing of, uh, of version numbers. Um, and they they're also the ones the second reason for that was they're also the ones that uh, um, issue the type libraries and the PIAs. Those are under their control. So they're the they're basically the last hands on whatever it is that we're doing anyway. Um, so they seem to be the logical place to have that uh, that responsibility reside. OK, so um, next issue is version compatibility. Um, the first point here is that uh, um, it, it's expected that uh, modeling environments and modeling components uh, support multiple Cape Open versions. OK, uh, major minor versions. Um, the next point is probably the most uh, what, what I would think would raise the biggest uh, discussion point here, which is that the, the GUIDs for the interfaces for everything um, are specific to a single major minor version number combination. OK, so Cape Open 1.1 uh, uh, will not be, nothing will be compatible with 2.0. And then when we go from 2.0 to 2.1, everything would be changed again. Every All the uh, GUIDs would be changed again. So basically, um, anytime we have some kind of a breaking change, they're going to break everything. Um, you know that was the decision that was made. The, the justification for that was that we wanted to make sure that a version, each version, worked, and uh, um, we didn't have issues come up with uh, um, compatibility. Um, you know, hidden issues come up within different uh, major, minor, version number combinations. Okay. So the next point follows on, which is that to interact, the PME and PM and any PMC must use the same version, major minor version number. Um, one point here is that if you have multiple PMCs in a PME, they don't all have to be talking Cape Open 1.0, 1 1.1, 1 1.2, 1 um, but each of them has to pick one to use. So one PME to one PMC can be 1.0 to 1.0. Another one can be 1.1 to 1.1. OK, and across the board. OK, the 
idea here is that that way you ha you can have some backwards compatibility between a uh, uh, an existing PME and a legacy PMC. The next point is that we would prefer that the highest common major minor version number is used. Um, that would give you the most current version being used across them. Um, and then, of course, the patch and build version numbers are incremented. And if the as long as the major minor numbers match the patch and the build, um, you're just going to be looking at feature additions or minor um, um, changes that are minor uh, repairs that should not affect any interoperability between the major major minor versions. OK, um, so I'm going to go on to the next slide. This is uh, slide uh, 10, by the way. So our plan for going forward with how we're doing the uh, adopting the versions, the current Cape Open 1.1, um, we're going to add in the flow sheet monitoring, the con uh, custom data, and the reactions packages when they're available. Those will all be available in Cape Open version 1.1, um, and it'll be point, uh, I believe point one for the flow sheet monitoring custom data. And I don't think reactions are quite yet available. So when that gets added, it'll be 1.1.2. Um, the Cape Open version 1.2, and that's only going to be reduced in uh, or uh, released in Cobia. Um, what we're going to do is replace persistence, the utilities, and the parameter common interface specifications. Uh, the new versions of those interfaces are currently available. We're working on the documentation for them at this point. Um, ICAPE unit report is going to be uh, removed, and it'll be replaced with a uh, um, new reporting common interface. I believe it's ICAPE report. Um, the material templates uh, system interface is going to be removed from the COSI interface specifications. Um, the COSI specifications are a, a common interface specification and uh, um, the material template system really should be managed by the um, uh, Thermos Dynamic SIG. Um, what we want to have happen is that the uh, simulation context interface um, allows for the uh, for for all SIGs that have something that can be that a, a PME provided service um, access to that service should be through the uh, uh, the simulation context um, and it shouldn't be it this necessarily shouldn't be something that's controlled by method and tools. OK, um, Thermosig has some uh, business interface specifications that are being updated and those will be included in 1.2. And then, of course, all of the uh, um, interface identifiers will be uh, updated and new category IDs will be issued for components implementing 1.2. Then once Cobia is final released, um, we'll, be, we'll be moving to version 2.0 of Cape Open. It'll incorporate the interface changes that are in Cape Open 1.2. Um, so what we would like is for the other SIGs to review and modify their business interface specification documents so that we can have uh, um, updated any updated versions that they want to have incorporated in 2.0. Um, I know Thermo is doing some work. I think Unit is doing some work. So we'd like to get all that together and ball that up into 2.0. Then again, of course, we will update the, the uh, IIDs, the GUIDs, and CAD IDs um, for everything that's implementing 2.0. And the last point is that uh, we don't foresee releasing a uh, primary interop assembly for um, Cape Open 2.0. Um, the uh, 3.5 version of .NET is going to be uh, end of life in the next year and a half, I believe it is. Um, and at that point, um, there's no longer need for the, the support for the 2.0, 3. Point, uh, or 2.0 and 3. Point, uh, .NET versions. And then once you move to the 4.0 .NET, you have the COM type equivalents. And we believe that that should uh, 
be good enough to allow you to uh, um, interop and eliminate the need for the uh, the primary interop assembly. Um, the reason for the primary interop assembly, why it was originally created, was because of type mismatches between uh, um, dot net types where you've had different imports of the type library. That was what was fixed with uh, dot net type equivalents um, in dot net 4.0. OK, and then um, last major topic I'm going to talk about here. I've got a couple of slides on it um, is Cobia and um, this is kind of the roadmap, the overarching view of where we are. Um, the phase one um, proof of concept phase that was completed about three years ago, two to three years ago, um, where we developed and demonstrated the, the um, core interactions between two um, Cape Open objects, I believe it was a thermo package um, it, in the, the phase one, and then also COM COBIA interoperability at that level. Phase two was to develop the full Windows native uh, um, package, and that's been uh, completed. Um, Jasper will go over and hit the next talk will be uh, Jasper's presentation on uh, um, the phase two release. Um, and then we do have a couple of talks after that of it being implemented within um, different uh, modeling components and that type of thing. So that's what most of today is, I believe, is is uh, what COBE is and applications of it in other uh, other aspects. Uh, phase three interoperability is our next uh, step. Um, we're looking at um, marshalling and a couple of other issues there. Um, working with .NET is one of them. That's been planned. That was. Uh, um, one of the one of the um, few language bindings that was planned from the get go with uh, with um, developing Cobia and of course other platforms. A um, little bit more on Cobia. Here's the actual timeline. Um, phase one was October 2016. We presented it. Phase two, um, the the status was presented, um, and uh, 2018. We had some uh, a training session on Cobia. Um, there had been a lot of uh, um, some use by um, some of the people that will be presenting later today um, on uh, some of the testing and, and uh, bug fixes and third party use. Um, HTRI and KBC received management support last year um, for their development using Cobia. And then uh, um, the Cobia runtime and SDK have been released for uh, application development. And then, of course, the future work, uh, we're working on scoping Cobia um, for the, the phase three, the developing the dotlet language bindings. Um, I've got the next slide has a bit more detail on. Nope. Um, so other language bindings, Cobia uh, will be maintained. Um, the, the code base itself and updated as, as needed. Um, in 2021, um, what our planned activities are is maintenance of the end user redistributable and SDK for Cobia. We've deployed a uh, debug symbol server at uh, https uh, colon slash slash uh, symbols.coland.org. So if you are developing with Cobia, if you reference that symbol server, um, and uh, you'll be able to um, get the debug symbols for uh, for Cobia. Um, transitioning of persisted items. So how do you take a PMC that was persisted in uh, Combase Cape Open and updated to Cobia? Um, that's a one way upgrade or update uh, um, that transition process. We we don't envision um, Cobia objects being D persisted back to COM. OK, so it's only uh, taking COM objects and moving it forward to Cobia. Um, and then the last thing is the scoping of phase three, and there are really three issues within phase three. Um, developing the thread model, um, marshalling, which would allow um, what cross process uh, um, applications uh, multi threaded out of process. Uh, 
um, remote applications, that type of thing would be covered under marshalling. And then the last uh, propose, or issue under the scoping of phase three is which language bindings um, we would be interested in uh, in developing. The candidate land, uh, language bindings are the .NET, Python, Java, and Fortran. Um, .NET, it's, uh, you know, that's kind of Microsoft's future there. So uh, we uh, we've always had that on the list. Um, Python is there because Python tends to be one of the first languages that uh, um, uh, engineering students, uh, undergrads tend to use. It's gaining a large popularity within the scientific community. Uh, a lot of data tools are developed using uh, um, Python, machine learning applications, those types of things. Um, and it's a it's a fairly simple and robust language that has a wide range of applications. So we we kind of feel Python. Um, if you were to ask me, this this would kind of be my hierarchy. Maybe swap Java and Fortran. Um, Java, um, we know that it's used out there for scientific computing. Um, a lot of uh, um, packages are available within the Java net. Uh, you know, uh, within Java to do a variety of different things related to uh, engineering type applications, chemistry type applications. Um, and then of course, Fortran provides a lot of legacy applications have been built in Fortran. So, um, you know, to, to make those code available um, going forward would be uh, would be useful. So those were the, the language of bindings that we're considering at this point. Um, you know, if there's others that you're interested in, you think are useful, um, you know, let Michelle or I know and uh, we can see about working them into proposals for, uh, for phase three. Um, other work that we have going forward are developing the interface specifications and hopefully getting the RFCs uh, done for those so that we can get feedback and get them approved as final. Um, also, we're working with, we'll continue working with the interoperability SIG. Testing and evaluation of COBIA is one of the aspects. Certification tools, what do they need to help do the certification process? And then uh, um, support for installation packages and issues associated with them. Okay, and that's my last slide. <laughs>